Now we go to the five transporting points. Number one, Jingwell points. Location, number one, on the lateral aspect of the big toe, point one tune proximal and lateral to the corner of the nail. How to find number one is located at the junction of two tangents along the proximal and lateral borders of the big toe, point one tune from the actual margin of the nail. Spleen one is located at the medial corner of the big toe. Needling, vertically, or obliquely point 0.1 to point 0.2 tune. Avoid needling into the perinesium. For excess conditions, trick to bleed. Caution, painful point. For the actions indications, liver 1 regulates the lower burner, the genitals and liver chi, eliminates dampness, opens the sensory orifices. Special features, liver 1 is the jingle point, wood point, bend point, five faces, and the point. This point has a marked action on the lower burner. First of all, it stops uterine bleeding from heat in the blood. It would not be indicated in uterine bleeding from chi deficiency. It resolves damp heat in the lower burner in two areas two main areas of the urinary, urinary function and external genitalia. The liver channel has an important influence on the external genitalia and such diseases are part of the broad group of diseases falling under the category of cranial and genitourinary disorders. Liver 1 in particular is a major point for use for hernial and genitourinary disorder. Shan is a general term for a wide variety of disorders. Traditionally, seven types of Shan disorders were listed. This can be broadly differentiated into three general categories. The Concise Dictionary of Chinese Medicine lists these three groups as follows. First, hernial type diseases characterized by a protrusion of an organ or tissue out of the abdominal cavity. Second, diseases of the external genitalia in men and women. Third, severe abdominal pain accompanied by constipation and retention of urine or difficulty in urination. Diseases of the external genitalia mentioned among the indications above are part of the hernial and genitourinary disorder. And liver 1 can be used for enlarged scrotum, which is scrotum, redness and swelling of the vulva, Pruritus bulba, etc. Liber, liber 1 dissolves damp heat from the urinary system and benefits urination so that it can be used for such symptoms as difficult urination, retention of urine, turbid urine, and painful urination. Finally, Liber 1 restores consciousness as many well points do and is used in the acute stage of wind stroke. For the summary, liver 1 regulates menstruation, irregular periods, excessive uterine bleeding, prolapse of uterus. It resolves damp heat, swelling and pain of the genitalia, pain in the penis, retraction of genitals, swelling of testicles, swelling and redness of vulva, retention of urine, blood in urine, painful urination, frequent urination, difficulty urination, and turbid urine. It also promotes resuscitation for the loss of consciousness or epilepsy. According to the song of the Jade Dragon for the seven types of Shan disorder, choose liver one while the essential question says when the pathogen resides in the foot, it will give rise to sudden pain of Shan disorder, needle above the nail of the big toe. Shan disorder is a broad category that includes hernia, genital swelling and pain, and severe pain of the lower abdomen. The most common patterns for this disorder include stagnation of chi, accumulation of cold in the lower channel, damp heat, traumatic injury, and deficiency. Liber 1 is the jingle point of the liver channel which encircles the genitals and enters the lower abdomen. It is an important point to regulate the chi in these areas 
and is the preeminent distal point in the treatment of any pattern of Shen disorder. But as the Jingwell point is specially suited to the urgent condition with acute and sudden pain. Both the Yellow Emperor Inner Classic and later texts such as the Great Compendium of Acupuncture and Maxibustion recommend that cross-needling be applied at liver 1. In other words, the left liver 1 is needled for right shunt disorder and vice versa. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss pericardium 7, Great Mound, a Yuan source point. Location on the anterior aspect of the wrist joint space, the most distal wrist crease between the tendons of the palmaris longus and flexor carpi radialis muscles. How to find pericardium 7? As the location of the wrist crease varies, the wrist joint space is a more valuable, more reliable reference point. By moving the patient's hand in a relaxed way, it can easily be palpated. Locate pericardium 7 on this level between the two tendons, which become more pronounced when the fingertips are pressed together. If only one tendon is visible, this will be the tendon of the flexor carpi radialis muscle. Pericardium 7 is located on its ulnar aspect. Located on the same level are heart 7 on the ulnar aspect of the wrist joint radial to the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle and lung 9 on the radial aspect of the wrist joint lateral to the radial artery. Needling of pericardium 7 vertically 0.3 to 0.5 soon for carpal tunnel syndrome, also 0.5 to 1 soon obliquely in a lateral direction along the tunnel. Caution, the median nerve is located directly under this point. Thus, needling can cause a significant electric sensation. In this case, no further needle manipulation to avoid possible injury. Actions or indications of pericardium 7. Clears heat from the heart, calms the shen harmonizes the stomach and intestines, cools heart fire, affecting the bladder, unbinds the chest, cools the blood, opens the channel, alleviates pain. Special features, Yuan Source Point, Shu Swim Point, Earth Point, Sedation Point, Sun Si Miao Ghost Point. Important point for calming, main point for carpal tunnel syndrome. Pericardium 7's most important function is that of calming the mind. In this respect, it has all the same functions as heart 7. As a matter of fact, historically, PC7 was used as a source point of the heart channel. The first chapter of the spiritual axis lists PC7 as the source point of the heart. PC7 is more effective in women and heart 7 more effective in men to calm the mind. PC7 is also better to deal with the emotional consequences of the breaking up of relationships. P7 also clears heart fire and is particularly important to use when heart fire causes mental problems, such as great anxiety and mental restlessness or even manic behavior. To summarize, pericardium 7 calms the mind and opens the mind's orifices. So this is particularly beneficial in insomnia, manic behavior, palpitations, agitation, mental restlessness, sadness, and fright. PC7 also clears heat and toxic heat. So febrile disease, red eyes, thirst, eczema of hands, carbuncles, farnacles. It also harmonizes the stomach, epigastric pain, vomiting. So let's compare heart 7 with pericardium 7. Both can nourish heart blood and calm the mind. Heart 7 is more for deficiency patterns, not for warm diseases, gentle action in calming the mind, not so strong in opening the mind's orifices, and it is better for men. For pericardium 7, it's more for excess patterns, important for warm diseases, heat in the pericardium at the nutritive chi level. PC7 is better for severe anxiety and mania, opens mind's orifices, better for women, and especially indicated for emotional upsets deriving from the breaking of relationships. Pericardium 7 is the shoestream yuan source and earth point of the pericardium channel. The classic of difficulty states, in cases of deficiency, reinforce the mother. In cases of excess, reduce the child. The pericardium channel belongs to fire, and as the earth or child point of a fire, the mother, 
the channel, pericardium salvan is able to reduce excess heat or fire from the pericardium. The pericardium is known as the wrapping of the heart. And like most points of the pericardium channel, pericardium salvan has a profound action on the heart and spirit. So close was the relationship between the pericardium and heart perceived to be that the spiritual pivot listed only five zan, omitting the pericardium entirely as a discrete zan. Whilst uh, describing the pericardium channel as the channel pertaining to the heart. Thus, for example, pericardium 7 rather than heart 7 was listed as the yuan source point of the heart. Pericardium 7 is indicated in a wide variety of emotional disorders and is especially used whenever heat rises to disturb the spirit, whether due to excess of any of the seven emotions transforming into fire. Stagnation of qi, which both impairs circulation of body fluids and transforms into fire, resulting in flame fire, which harasses the heart. Febrile heat collapsing into the pericardium, blazing heat arising from deficiency of yin. When the spirit is disrupted in this way, it will give rise to palpitations, agitation, epilepsy, mania, manic raving, restlessness, insomnia, and anxiety. Under its alternative name of ghost heart, Pericardium 7 was included by Sun Si Miao among his 13 ghost points for the treatment of mania disorder and epilepsy. In common with several other points of the channel, pericardium 7 is indicated when febrile disease penetrates to the nutritive and especially the blood levels, agitating the pericardium and spirit and giving rise to fever with agitation, cracked tongue, insomnia, and even mania. This action of pericardium 7 on cooling the blood level further explains its use in the treatment of eczema, wind rash, and carbuncles and pharyncles. Pericardium 7 is the principal point used in the treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome, in which case the needle is inserted obliquely and distally along the carpal tunnel. Thank you for your attention. Let's now discuss um, kidney four, the great bell point, a loo connecting point. So kidney four is located anterior to the medial border of the Achilles tendon, superior to the in, uh, insertion of the calcaneus. How to find kidney four? Uh, from the highest prominence of the medial malleolus, draw our horizontal line to the medial border of the Achilles tendon. From there, measure 0.5 tune in a distal direction. Kidney 4 is located in a depression anterior to the Achilles tendon, slightly superior to its insertion at the calcaneus. Or, uh, kidney 4 is located posterior to the midpoint of a line connecting kidney 3 and kidney 5 anterior to the Achilles tendon. Kidney 4 is needled vertically 0.3 to 0.52. Um, avoid puncturing the tendons. For its actions and indications, kidney 4 it helps the kidney absorb the chi and supports the lungs. It strengthens the kidneys and cools empty heat. It strengthens the will and dispels fear. It, it is also a local point. For its special feature, kidney 4 is a little connecting point. Being the connecting point, kidney 4 connects with the blooded channel and is therefore useful to treat chronic backache or kidney deficiency. It is often used in conjunction with the governing vessel as follows. Uh, these points are used in a man. So kidney 4 in conjunction with SI3 on the left and bladder 62 on the right, or with heart 7 on the right and kidney 4 on the left. Kidney 4 in common with other yin connecting points also has a marked effect on the mind and can be used both to calm the mind and to lift the spirit when the person is exhausted and depressed from a chronic kidney deficiency. So, to emphasize, kidney 4 strengthens the kidneys receiving qi. It's good for cough, coughing with blood, wheezing, 
breathlessness, rattling sound in throat, the feeling of oppression of the chest. It also cramps the mind and lifts the mind and is good for palpitations, agitation, mental retardation, manic behavior, propensity to anger, somnolence, fright, unhappiness, desire to close doors and remain at home. It also benefits urination in cases of difficult urination, dribbling urine and retention of urine. And it strengthens the back for lower back ache. Kidney four, the low connecting point of the kidney channel, regulates the kidney functions in two main ways. Firstly, it reinforces and regulates the relationship between the kidneys and the lung. And secondly, it has a strong effect on stabilizing the emotions. According to the complete works of Ching Yue, the lung is the master of the qi. The kidneys are the root of qi. The lung dominates exhalation of qi, while the kidney dominates the reception of qi. Only when yin and yang are mutually communicating is respiration in harmony. In discussing the discipline, the case history from the Guide to Clinical Patterns by Yi Tian Shi states that uh, when it is in the lungs, it is excess. When in the kidneys, it is deficient. This latter statement, although something of an oversimplification, nevertheless emphasizes that when a respiratory disorder is acute and of excess type, it is the lung that must be emphasized in treatment. And when it is chronic and uh, deficient in nature, treatment of the kidneys takes priority. In this, uh, in its action on harmonizing the relationship between the lungs and the kidneys, kidney four is indicated when the kidney chi is insufficient to receive and anchor the chi from the lungs, resulting in coughing, wheezing, asthma, shortness of breath, etc. Or when kidney yin is deficient and unable to moisten it and cool the lung, mouth, and throat, resulting in wheezing, coughing of blood, dry and painful throat, and others. Both these situations are referred to as excess above and deficiency below. Compared to kidney 3, kidney 4 has a relatively stronger effect on addressing the fullness above and a lesser action on nourishing the kidneys. In common with many of the loop connecting points, kidney 4 has a strong action on the emotions. According to the spiritual pivot, deficiency of qi in the kidney channel of Wu Xiaoyin may give rise to susceptibility to fear. When the kidney qi is not animated, the will is deficient and the person easily suffers from fear and lack of confidence, which may so severe which may be so severe that they withdraw and are not willing to or unable to leave the safety of their home. When congenital essence is deficient or essence is consumed in old age, there may be susceptibility to fearfulness, poor mental functions or development, and a decline of mental faculties. Susceptibility to fear may not only be due to deficiency of the kidneys, especially kidney essence, but also to feebleness and deficiency of qi and blood, which fail to nourish and support the spirit, or to deficiency of the liver and gallbladder. Kidney four, an essential point in the treatment of fear due to kidney deficiency, also plays an important role in the treatment of any of these patterns because of close relationship to of the kidneys to fear. Severe excessive desire to sleep may result either from spleen deficiency with accumulation of phlegm in dampness or from kidney young or kidney essence deficiency. Kidney four is an important point for somnolence due to kidney deficiency. 
the kidney loop connecting channel rises from kidney cord to the lumbar spine, accentuating the close relationship of the kidneys in this region. And this point is therefore indicated for stiffness and pain of the lumbar region. Like kidney three, kidney four is also used for heel pain. Finally, the great compendium of acupuncture and Sebastian gives specific indications for excess and deficiency of the lumbar connecting points. In the case of kidney four, these are retention of urine for excess and lumbar pain in deficiency. Thank you for your attention. Now we go to the back transporting points, letter 27, the small intestine tube. Location, letter 27 is 1.5 tune lateral to the posterior midline on the level of the first sacral foramen. How to find the quick method, locate the posterior superior iliac spine, PCs, from the Ramai Ani, palpate three tune, one hand breath, in a superior and lateral direction at a 45 degrees angle until you feel a distinct bony ridge, ridge. Opens superficially visible by a dimple. Bladder 27 is located slightly superiorly and medially to the pieces. 1.5 tune lateral to the midline on the level of the first sacral foramen. For more detail on orientation on the lumbar and sacral region. Okay. Located at the same level are bladder 31 over the first sacral foramen and bladder 28 slightly below the medial, below and medial to the pieces at the level of the second, second sacral foramen. Needling, bladder 27, vertically 0.5 to 1 tune. For the action indications, it tonifies the small intestine chi, drains dampness and damp heat, and regulates the water passages. Letter 27 special features is the back shoe point of the small intestine. Letter 27 point stimulates the small intestine function of receiving and separating and can be used in many small intestine patterns with such symptoms as bugbering knee, abdominal pain, and mucus in the stools. Bladder 27 also eliminates damp heat from the lower burner and benefits urination so that it can be used to treat such symptoms as cloudy urine, difficult urination, and burning on urination. This point's effect on urinary function is due partly to the relationship between the small intestine and bladder within the greater young channels and partly to the functional relationship between these two organs. In fact, the small intestine separates the fluids it receives from the stomach into a clean part, which goes to the bladder for excretion as urine and a dirty part which goes to the large intestine partly for reabsorption and partly for excretion in the stools. For the summary, Letter 27 promotes the function of small intestine uh, for having diarrhea, blood and mucus in the stools, constipation, difficult bowel evacuation, and abdominal pain. It resolves dampness. It benefits urination for those having dark urine, enuresis, retention of urine, difficult urination, and blood in the urine. Letter 27 is the back shoe point of small intestine who where the chi of the small intestine emanates from the interior of the body surface. According to the introduction of medicine by Ting of the Ming Dynasty, the small intestine separates from the pure separates the pure from the turbid and water enters the upper opening of the bladder and the and the dregs enter the upper opening of the large intestine. This quotation emphasizes the emphasizes the role of the small intestine as the intermediary between the stomach which rats and ripen solid and liquid food and the large intestine and the bladder which eliminates solid and liquid waste respectively. It is the small intestine which controls this process of separating the pure from the turbid. 
Although bladder 27 is the back shoe point of the small intestine, who, therefore, its clinical action extends both to the large intestine and the bladder. In intestinal disorder, it primarily drains turgid dampness and clears damp heat and can be used in the treatment of diarrhea, dysenteric disorder, and blood and mucus in the stools due to this etiology. Bladder 27 may also be used for constipation and for hemorrhoids and accompanying pain. In disorders of the bladder, it also drains dampness and damp heat and clears heat transmitted from the heart, interiorly, exteriorly coupled with small intestine, being indicated in the treatment of dark yellow urine. Inuresis, retention of urine, blood in the urine, agitation of the heart. Okay, Following the principle that dampness and damp heat may be drained from the body via urination. Bladder 27 is also indicated for damp heat affecting other portions of the lower gel with symptoms such as leukorrhea and seminal emission. If damp heat sinks to the lower limb, there may be swelling of the feet. Finally, bladder 27 may be used in the treatment of the pattern of small intestine chi pain. This form of painful shun disorder which may arise due to improper diet Stagnation of liver chi or exposed to cold leads to obstruction in the circulation of chi in the small intestine. Its characteristic symptoms are lower abdominal pain or testicular pain that may radiate to the lumbar region. Thank you for your attention. Now let's talk about the lung divergent channel. The divergent channels run deeper than the main channels. All of them start near the lower end of the main channels. All enter the internal organs and all emerge at the neck. Thus, all the divergent channels run from the lower to the upper part of the body. Generally, the pathway of the yin divergent channels follows the following pattern. They separate from their respective yin main channel. Some, the heart, lung, and kidneys, connect with their respective yin organ. They join the related yang divergent channel. For example, kidney divergent to bladder divergent. They then join the related yang main channel on the neck. The divergent channels have departure and meeting points. They also have entering and exiting points where they converge they enter and where they depart, they exit. They start from yang channels and return to them. They harmonize interior and exterior and regulate the flow of chi to and from the head. Now let's talk about the pathway of the lung divergent channel. The lung divergent channel separates from the lung primary channel in the axillary region, it travels anteriorly to gallbladder 22, on the mid-axillary line, pre-tune inferior to the axilla. Then it enters the thoracic region, disperses in the lung its pertaining zang organ, descends to the large intestine, its paired foo organ. It descends again and emerges in the region of the supraclavicular fossa at stomach 12 traverses the neck in a cranial direction and connects with the large intestine primary channel at LI18 at one of the six Ho confluences. So this is the LI, LU, a sixth confluence. There exist variations regarding the channel pathway due to differing interpretations of the Ling Shu. Clinical importance of studying the lung divergent channel. It strengthens the connection between the lung and the large intestine, the Zanfu organ systems. Points on the large intestine primary channel can therefore be used for disorders of the lung and vice versa points on the lung primary channel can treat disorders of the large intestine. It creates a network between the lung primary channel and the neck region at the confluent point, which is LI18. Thus, lung points such as lung 10 or lung 11 may be used to treat the neck region. 
So here is a simplified illustration of the long divergent channel. As you can see, it connects with the lung and disperses in the large intestine, and it ascends across the throat. It diverges from the lung main channel. Again, this is just a review of the axilla and passes anterior to the heart channel in the chest. It connects with the lungs and disperses in the large intestine. It ascends from the lungs to the throat and converges with the large intestine channel at the neck. Thank you for your attention. Let's continue with kidney 18, the exchange belief point and accumulation or chiclet point. Kidney 8 is located to tune proximal to the highest prominence of the medial malleolus, posterior to the medial border of the tibia. How to find kidney 8? It is located in the same level as kidney 7, but slightly closer to the border of the tibia, approximately 0.52. Kidney 8 is needed vertically 0.5 to 1 tune. For its actions and indications, it regulates menstruation, regulates the renmai and chongmai, and it clears heat and eliminates dampness from the lower burner and treats blockages of the yin chow mai. For its special, special feature, it is the chic left point of the yin chow mai. Being the accumulation of the yin stepping vessel, Kidney 8 can invigorate this vessel and is particularly good to eliminate obstructions along the vessel and dissolve abdominal masses, especially abdominal masses in women. The yin stepping vessel can move qi, eliminate yin excesses, and dissolves masses. This point is therefore important for abdominal pain deriving from obstruction and stagnation in the yin stepping vessel. Being uh, kidney eight is also an import is also important to regulate menstruation, particularly for menstrual problems deriving from stasis of blood. So kidney eight benefits the uterus and regulates menstruation in cases of painful periods, heavy periods, irregular periods, and amenorrhea. It also resolves dampness in abdominal coolness, diarrhea, retention of urine, painful urination, turbid urine, difficult urination, swelling and pain of the testicles, and itching of genitals. It also removes obstruction from the channel uh, in unilateral abdominal pain and abdominal masses. Kidney 8 is the chic left point of the yin motility, motility vessel, which originates at kidney 6. The chic left point of the yin channels have a special action of treating disorders of blood, especially resolving blood stasis, clearing heat from the blood, and stopping bleeding. Although the yin motility vessel does not enter the uterus like all the extraordinary vessels, has a close relationship with the kidneys. And according to the essential questions, the vessels of the uterus connect with the kidneys. The role played by the kidneys in holding the blood in place, in holding the blood in place was emphasized by the great Han Dynasty, Dr. Hua Tu, who said of the kidneys in Males, they serve the purpose of shutting in the essence, while in females, of dropping the blood. Kidney 8 is indicated in a variety of menstrual disorders, and most especially uterine bleeding. Uterine bleeding may be, may be due to a variety of different etiologies. If the kidneys are injured by excessively yearly sexual activity, sexual overindulgence, multiple pregnancy, etc. In either the kidney yin or kidney yang may, be, uh, may become deficient, leading to infirmity of the conception and penetrating vessels. Kidney 8 is predominantly indicated in deficiency patterns of uterine bleeding, particularly in cases of kidney deficiency. 
but its status as a chiclet point and its secondary action of rainy dampness renders it suitable in the treatment of uterine bleeding due to blood stasis, reckless movement of hot blood, and damp heat. Kidney 8 has a secondary action of draining dampness from the lower jaw. In the genital region, it can treat such disorders as itching, swelling, sweating, and pain of the genitals. In the urinary system, it can promote urination and tear heat in the treatment of retention of urine, difficult urination, and painful urinary dysfunction, especially cheap painful urinary dysfunction. In the intestines, it is indicated in the treatment of diarrhea, dysenteric disorders, and difficult defecation. Kidney ache can be helpful for all menstrual disorders, particularly heavy period where uh, one may consider sedating this point. For red or white vaginal discharges, um, this is also, this intersection is where the spleen region crosses the kidneys between kidney 8 and kidney 9. It is particularly good on a men, uh, mental level, especially in cases of extreme anxiety and fear. Interaction between groups of people and officials are dependent upon the open and harmonious exchange of ideas, responsibilities, and knowledge. It affects uh, fluidity and encourages the regulation of our daily, monthly, and seasonal rhythm. It is also good with moxa and can be effective for anxiety, dizziness, insomnia, and genital itching. Thank you for your attention. We continue with the four C's, do 15, gate of muteness. Do 15 location on the occiput on the posterior midline in the depression between the first, the atlas, and the second axis, cervical vertebra. Approximately 0.5 June inferior to do 16 directly be below the external occipital protuberance. How to find the external occipital protuberance is a hump shaped projection on the posterior surface of the occipital bone on the midline and slightly superior to the craniocervical junction. <clears throat> do 16 is located in the depression on the posterior midline that you can palpate directly inferior to the protuberance. From there, glide 0.5 tune in an inferior direction and locate do 15 superior to the first pulp palpable spinous process belonging to the axis. The atlas has no spinous process and approximately 0.5 June spear to the posterior hairline. Located on the same level is bladder 10 on the lateral aspect of the trapezius muscle. Needling do 15 is 0.5 to 1 June strictly perpendicularly in an inferior direction. Caution injury to the cervical marrow. According to the classic text, maxibustion is contraindicated. For the action indication, bladder 15 is for uh, benefits the tongue, ears, neck, and spine. Dispels wind, clears young heat, and excess. For the special features, do 15 is the meeting point with young way mind. C of G point. Do 15 main action is that of st stimulating speech. It is used to promote the faculty of speech in children with speech, with speech difficulties or adult after a wind stroke. Many extraordinary claims were made during the Cultural Revolution in China regarding the effect of this point in treating deaf-mute children. Chinese doctors are now admitting that most of these claims were exaggerated, if not outright false. Used with reinforcing method, do 15 nourishes the brain and clears the mind by promoting the rising of clear yang to the head also by virtue of being a point of, of the sea of chi. Do 15 extinguishes exterior wind, loss of consciousness from wind stroke, epilepsy. It also benefits the tongue and stimulates speech. 
those having stiffness of the tongue, inability to speak, loss of voice, laxidity of tongue. It also clears the mind, those having deep feeling of heaviness of the head, poor memory, poor concentration. The 15 on the back of the neck just above the hairline lies directly opposite to the root of the tongue and according to the great compendium of acupuncture and moxibustion, a channel from 215, gate of muteness, uh, binds at the root of the tongue. The spiritual fiber least 215 as a point of the sea of chi and states when the sea of chi is deficient, there is scanty energy insufficient for speech. As early as the systematic classic of acupuncture and moxibustion, and reasserted in later texts, it was said that mox moxibustion at this point would cause a person to become mute, while needling it would cause muteness. This classical reference provided the basis for the claims made during the turbulent years of cultural revolution that the deep needling of do 15 could have almost miraculously effects in the treatment of deaf-mute children. Photographs were published of full class classroom of previously deaf-mute children singing The East is Red. Like many of the extreme claims made during this period, this was later discredited. Indeed, it was confirmed that many patients suffering injury to the spinal cord from excessive deep needling. Notwithstanding this reservation, do 15 is one of the few acupuncture points classically indicated for loss of voice and muteness as well as for stiffness and flaccidity of the tongue and condition known as lotus flower tongue, distension and prominence of the blood vessels beneath the tongue, all of which may prevent normal speech. The great compendium of acupuncture and moxibustion advises the use of do 15 for all kinds of young heat and chi exuberance, while the secret of a border official young chi and heat. In this context, it is interesting to note that many of the tongue disorders referred to arise due to excess heat and young exuberance. The second principal option of do 15 is to eliminate either exterior or interior wind, giving rise to such symptoms as wind heat, stiff neck, loss of consciousness, epilepsy, clonic spasm and chills, and fever with absence of sweating. Moreover, the location of this point on the neck and the pathway of governing vessels through the spine renders it suitable for the treatment of stiff neck and spine due to any etiology. Like do 14, do 15 is also indicated for nosebleed that does not stop. Finally, do 15 is cited in the song of the nine needles for returning the young for the treatment of collapse of young characterized by loss of consciousness, aversion to cold, cold counterflow of the limb, purple lips, etc. Thank you for your attention. Concepts of warm diseases in common cold and influenza. The essential characteristics of warm diseases are therefore as follows. They manifest with general symptoms and signs of wind heat in the early stages, uh, with wind heat intended here in a broad sense, as in, it may also manifest as damp heat, summer heat, winter heat, spring heat, and dry heat. There is always a fever. They are infectious. The wind heat penetrates via the nose and mouth, and the patho pathogenic factors is particularly strong. Thus, although all pathogenic factors contemplated by the school of warm diseases fall under the broad definition of wind heat, not all diseases caused by wind heat are warm diseases. Some of the exterior diseases that start with symptoms of wind heat are warm diseases um, with all the above mentioned characteristics, and some are not. Examples of warm diseases are measles, chickenpox, German measles, 
poliomyelitis, smallpox, scarlet fever, whooping cough, and meningitis. Examples of green heat diseases that are not warm diseases are common cold of the wind heat type, influenza, glandular fever or monocleosis, and any non-specific upper respiratory infection manifesting with symptoms of green heat. This is a very important, um, very important consideration in practice. It is possible to stop diseases from simple wind heat at the early stages, but although true warm diseases may be alleviated by, uh, in the initial stages, they may not be entirely stopped. In theory, as wind is the pathogenic factor in the early stages of any exterior disease, uh, whether warm disease or not, by releasing the exterior and expelling wind, we may stop any exterior invasion at its beginning. Although it is possible for simple invasions of wind heat, it is not possible for warm diseases. Thus, for example, if a child is infected with Bordetella pertussis bacterium, causing whooping cough, we may not be able to stop the disease completely in its beginning stages. In the initial stage, all exterior diseases manifest with similar symptoms of wind cold or wind heat. And at this point, it is not possible to tell whether the patient is suffering from a simple invasion of wind heat or warm disease. It is important to treat them according to the principle of treatment of exterior diseases as even the warm diseases may not be stopped completely in the beginning stage. Chinese medicine can alleviate the symptoms, shorten the course of disease, and prevent complication. Common cold and influenza are simple invasions of wind that can be stopped in the initial stages. Since common cold and influenza are relatively mild and self-limiting diseases, why does the theory of their diagnosis and treatment have such a prominent place in Chinese medicine? Chinese medicine views the disease differently from Western medicine, believing that if external wind is allowed to penetrate the interior, it can trigger many different diseases. It is therefore important to eliminate the pathogenic factor as early as possible. Simple invasions of wind heat can be stopped at the initial stage. Warm diseases can be alleviated, their course shortened, and any complications avoided. The treatment of exterior invasion is also important because they can have very serious consequences in children and the elderly. In children, many serious diseases start with symptoms of invasion of wind heat. In the initial stages, one does not know what disease it might be, and it is therefore important to treat the manifestations early. For example, measles, diphtheria, whooping cough, polymyelitis, acute nephritis, scarlet fever, and meningitis, we all manifest with symptoms of wind heat in the beginning stage. In the elderly, exterior wind may easily penetrate the interior, causing bronchitis and pneumonia, which are often fatal in old age. Infection from the common cold or influenza virus takes place through the upper respiratory tract and may occur in any season but is more frequent in winter or spring. From the Chinese point of view, they can manifest with symptoms of either wind cold or wind heat. 